What's going on guys? I have a brand new webcam for you today. And uh, if you've been on this channel before, you know, usually that means a negative video. However, that's something new for you. That's right, on this channel, for the very first time, I'm going to speak about a webcam. Uh, I wouldn't say excitedly, but I will say optimistically. This is the Avermedia, the Avermedia PW510. Come on, though. there we go. This thing, look at this, look at the size of this thing compared to the C920. This thing is huge. It is It is a, a chonky, a chonky, chonky webcam. Now, if you remember correctly, I recently did a video and it was on Avermedia's beginner kit that included a webcam. And uh, I gave some pretty poor reviews to that webcam because frankly, it just, it didn't look good. And that was their only webcam on the market. And they responded to me in an email, by the way, saying, hey, we appreciate the feedback. Uh, we're gonna go back and see what we can do to improve some of these issues. Uh, in the meantime, we have this webcam that we haven't released. Would you wanna check it out? And with my experience with their other webcam, I was not enthusiastic about it, but I said, sure, why not? Go ahead and send it. This thing comes in a massive box. And Sam, if you remember correctly, I plugged this thing in and the first thing I did was message Sam and said, I just found the best webcam I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and the reason it's not on the market is because it's not actually meant to be a gaming webcam. They actually designed this thing, maybe in a different housing, I'm not sure, but they, they designed it to be an industry level, like a B2B, business to business webcam that they sell for conference calling, which is surprising because usually those webcams are trash. But yeah, anyway, they took the webcam, they put it in like more of a, they said a gaming colored housing. I don't know, I didn't see the original one. And now uh, they're looking to sell it as a gaming webcam. But I've talked enough about it, let's compare this to another webcam that came out this year that is meant to be for streamers and let's see how they compare. Let's go over the specs real quick. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is the place for you to go to get overlays, design, profile pictures, panels, whatever you need for your stream aesthetics. And the best part is that these overlays are modular. So for example, you and all your friends pick up this one called Rodan that I really like. Every one of you can pick and choose different pieces so none of you have the exact same overlay. If you'd like to make the smart move like many of the community have done, make sure you use the link in the description below. It will support the channel as as well as use code alpha at checkout for 40% off. Get yourself something pretty. You deserve it. Anyway, let's start by talking about the specs of the stream cam. The stream cam captures in 1080p 60. Strangely, I swear when it first came out, the software allowed it to get up to 4K 30. I just double checked and uh, no, apparently it can't. So I don't know if they dropped that or if I'm remembering incorrectly. It's got a 78 degree field of view, same perspective as the C920. It's got a 3.7 millimeter lens with an aperture that goes down to F2. It's got a non-removable USB type C cable, which was just a bad call. And then if you remember from my video on it, uh, just a bunch of really weird features that streamers aren't gonna use, you know, like Steadicam. <laughs> the Avermedia 510 also does 1080p60, however, it can also do 4K in 25 frames per second, which uh, if you've ever done 25 FPS on a stream, it doesn't look great, it looks really choppy. Important note though, in OBS you can change the resolution to slightly lower than 4K and get 30 FPS on it. So you're getting nearly 4K resolution while still maintaining the 30 FPS, which is really cool. It's got the widest field of view I've seen on a webcam at 94 degrees. It's got a removable USB Type-C port on the back, which it comes with a cable that goes to USB 3 Type-A that'll work with, you know, anybody's computer. And the lens opens up to f2.8, though it doesn't really specify the focal length. And can we just, again, note <laughs> the size differences between these two cameras. I mean, it, I'm not saying this as a negative thing because it, I don't think it really matters that much because this thing's gonna either be sitting on a tripod or like on the top of your monitor. Not the biggest deal. I mean, I use gigantic DSLRs for my stream, so maybe I'm just used to it. But let's go ahead and plug them into the PC because if you remember from the stream cam video, I was very impressed with the image quality of the stream cam, just not with the features. So. Let's see how they hold up there. All right, let's look at these two cameras side by side. We got the Avermedia camera on the left side, which by the way, double checked with an employee, it is actually Avermedia, not Avermedia. Important note, moving to the right side, we have the streamer cam. There's probably two things you'll notice first. One of those two things is the coloring. 
I was really impressed with both of these cameras. For webcams, they do a really good job of picking up all the colors, picking up proper brightness, good dynamic range, fairly clear. However, the Logitech Stream Cam still wins out in color clarity, image quality. You notice my skin tones look a lot more natural on the right side. And on the left side, you got a little bit of a magenta tint to my face. If you watched my Logitech Stream Cam video, you know that was the main thing I praised, was just the raw image quality of the camera. The second thing that pops out is obviously the field of view. You'll notice on the right one, I just look a lot bigger. Now, both of these cameras were sitting right next to each other, the exact same distance away from me, but the Stream Cam only has a 78 degree field of view, but this is the difference between the Stream Cam at 78 degree field of view versus the Avermedia camera, which is all the way out to 94 degrees. I mean, still not quite as wide as a full on DSLR camera like this one at like this lens I'm using right now is at like 110 degrees, but this camera is not, not quite in the race. It's a little bit of a nicer camera. Let's go back to the webcams. Kind of interesting thing of note here, just looking at the image quality, the stream cam is set to completely auto. This is plugged in. This is how it looked when it showed up for the Avermedia camera. When I plugged it in, it looked a little bit washed out at first. I actually had to go into the settings and turn down the brightness from level four to level two. Now, 1080p60 is as high as the stream cam can go. However, we talked about how the Avermedia camera can go up to 4K. So when we blow this thing up to 4K, it gets limited to 25 frames per second. And you can see from the footage, uh, it doesn't look very good, which is weird to me because if you've ever been in a movie theater, those movies are filmed in 24 frames per second. You know it looks better than this. My guess is that the issue really lies in the fact that you're trying to fit a 25 frame per second shot on a canvas that's recording in 30 or 60 frames per second, and they, you just can't get the frames to line up right, causing a lot of really weird stuttering like this. But if you remember what I said earlier, in OBS, you can actually change the resolution to what I'm gonna call 3.2K. It's not really a thing, but it's there. And when you do that, you can actually use 30 FPS and you still get that super high resolution. The main advantage of something like this being zoom-ins. If you've ever watched a Twitch stream where someone looks at the camera, they give a reaction, maybe someone says something in chat, maybe something ridiculous happens in game, and you ever just wanna like meme the camera, you look at the camera, you zoom in, whatever you wanna do, you can do that on this camera and still have the camera be in full 1080p. Let's take a look at the difference between the two cameras zoomed in. You can see when we zoom in on the Avermedia, it still looks incredibly crisp. Whereas if we jump over to the stream cam, we're jumping from 1080p down to you know, you know, a quarter of that resolution. The edges look terrible. The colors look terrible. Everything just looks like an early 2000s phone camera. This is the real advantage to streaming with a 4K camera. Not that you'd ever need to stream in 4K, but that if you ever wanted to punch in, you'd still have that full resolution. It's really cool. Interesting thing that's important to know, when I boosted this up to 4K, I noticed I lost a little bit of brightness. I had to move the brightness slider up to level three to compensate for the darker image. Not entirely sure why that's happening. I feel like that's something that should be fixed automatically. Nevertheless, not a big deal. It's usually you don't change resolution of a camera in the middle of a stream. So as long as you set it right, it's totally fine. Couple last things of note, the stream cam, as I mentioned in the previous video, had pretty good autofocus. I didn't really notice much of a need for autofocus on the Avermedia camera because not only is the lens so wide, which makes the depth of field much less noticeable, but also the aperture is only f2.8, which again is gonna make uh, a much less shallow depth of field effect. So I, when I got closer and further away, I didn't even notice any defocusing to begin with. They haven't let me in on any kind of planned pricing for the product. And I, I honestly, they haven't even officially announced that they're gonna be selling it. It sounds like they'd like to with some of the emails we've been going back and forth, but Again, I'm telling you everything I know about this right now. I'd love to see this come to market. It's so awesome to see cameras with features that streamers need, things like 4K, things like 94 degree field of view, that super wide angle. And I think this could be a really useful tool in the hands of streamers. It's still like not even the same thing as using a real camera like the Sony A5100 or, or my Canon EOS R that I use on stream. And if webcams will ever get up there, I mean, I just really doubt it, but that's why a camera setup costs three to four times as much. If you have any other questions about this, camera. I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Link to that in the description down below. Or if you're curious to talk to some other streamers about maybe what are some of the most important features to them in a camera, uh, go ahead and jump in the Discord. We have about 40,000 members in the Alpha Gaming Discord, all of whom love talking about webcams, microphones, equipment. Go ahead and hit that up in the link in the description below. I hope this helped. And as always, happy streaming. The subs already today. You guys are absolutely nutty. I'm sorry, Frosty, but the people have spoken. <laughs>